At first glance, it's easy to spot the difference between these two ships. This one is long and thin with lovely fine lines and generally just looks like a good looking vessel. This one, on the other hand, is much chunkier and less elegant looking. In crude terms, it's fatter, which means it also suffers from a phenomenon that I like to call the fat ship wobble. You can put the rudder over to start a turn, then return it to midships. The ship will then start to turn faster and faster. Its rate of turn increases until you apply counter helm. If you don't get that counter helm quite right and you keep the rudder in the middle a little too long, it will then start turning in the opposite direction. A fat ship literally wobbles around from side to side, needing continuous corrections from the rudder to keep it straight. A long thin ship, on the other hand, is hard to get turning and quite quick to steady up when you return the rudder to midships. We call this directional stability, with a fat ship having less directional stability than a thin ship. More precisely, this element of directional stability is related to the ratio between a vessel's length and its beam, and it's called, appropriately, the length to beam, or LB ratio. For a normal ship, you can expect a ratio of around 7, meaning that a 70 metre long ship will have a beam of approximately 10 metres. As the ratio gets smaller, directional stability will similarly reduce, but that might be what you want. For example, a tug might have a length to beam ratio of 1 or 2, but that gives it a massive advantage because it makes life so much easier when it needs to manoeuvre off the quarter of a large vessel. Likewise, if you increase your length to beam ratio above 7, you can get a ship that tends to keep itself pointing in a straight line without needing as much correction from the rudder. Queen Mary 2, for example, has a length of 345 metres and a beam at the waterline of 41, giving a length to beam ratio of 8.4, quite fitting for a ship designed to run for thousands of miles in a straight line. It's great to look at these real life examples, comparing data from different sources, in the same way as this video's sponsor, Ground News. They're an incredibly interesting news site that puts all the world's media in one place. With just a click or a swipe, you can compare how stories are being covered by different news outlets. For every story, you get a visual breakdown of the news outlet's bias, showing you whether the coverage is mostly from the left, from the right, or balanced in the middle. You also get to see the distribution of ownership of the outlets covering the story and their typical factual accuracy. And it's fantastic for accessing global news from diverse viewpoints. You can use the map feature to look at how international stories are being covered by news outlets on the ground or in neighbouring countries. You can even follow specific topics that you're most interested in, like space or tech news. Over time, you build up your own profile to discover your own news buyers based on the topics you generally interact with and the organisations that publish them. One of the really interesting things about Ground News is that it was developed by a former NASA engineer and a team of media outsiders committed to making the news more transparent. If you want to join me in being better informed, go to ground.news navigation and subscribe for unlimited access. Anyway, we've just been discussing the length to beam ratio of ships and how Queen Mary 2's ratio of 8.4 is great for going in a straight line. Generally, the rule is that the higher the length to beam ratio, the better the directional stability of the vessel. Of course, every good rule is there to be broken, so as the length to beam ratio gets even higher, you'll find vessels like these, Great Lakers. Theirs is 9 or 10, but they're not designed for speed. Instead, they've been designed to be as large as possible, yet still fit within the locks on the St. Lawrence River. They're limited to 740 feet in length by 78 foot beam and 26 and a half foot draft, that's about 225 by 24 by 8 meters, otherwise known as Seaway Max. Confusingly though, despite their extremely high length to beam ratio, I mean 225 divided by 24 is 9.4, these are not directionally stable vessels. This is due to another coefficient we use when describing hull geometry, the block coefficient. It basically describes how similar to a cuboid the form of a ship's hull actually is. If you take a vessel's length, breadth and draft, you could construct a box that the underwater portion of the hull would fit into. By comparing the ratio of the actual underwater volume to the volume of the box, we get the block coefficient. A block coefficient of 1 would imply that the vessel is a box-shaped vessel. As you shave parts of the hull to make it more streamlined, the block coefficient decreases. So, for example, the Seaway Max vessel that's designed to fit into the locks in the St. Lawrence River has a high block coefficient because it allows the ship to carry more cargo while still fitting inside the locks. A passenger liner, on the other hand, has a lot of space around the hull in the box, giving it a much lower block coefficient, maybe 0.5. Two vessels could have the exact same length, breadth and draft, but 
If one has a higher block coefficient than the other, it will displace more water and carry more cargo, but it will have less directional stability. Remember how it worked for the length to beam ratio? Well, it works the same for the block coefficient. A vessel with a higher block coefficient will generally have less directional stability than a vessel with lower block coefficient. We had the fat ship wobble with the higher length to beam ratio, and now we have the chunky ship wobble for ships with a higher block coefficient. For both, the reduction in directional stability means that it's easier for them to start turning, but harder to keep them going straight. It makes them more manoeuvrable in a tight spot, but less fuel efficient when going in a straight line for days on end. Conversely, a ship with finer lines, so a lower length to beam ratio and a lower block coefficient, will have greater directional stability, making it harder to get them to turn. Think of an ocean liner dodging an iceberg, for instance. As you don't need to constantly correct the fat ship wobble with directionally stable ships, it means that their rudder spends more time on the center line, helping to cut down on resistance. That, combined with less water resistance from a shallower path that the displaced water needs to take, means that ships with a lower length to beam ratio and a lower block coefficient are generally faster and more efficient. It does, however, come at the expense of cargo carrying capacity. If you're restricted on space, say in a lock like the St. Lawrence Seaway or even the Panama Canal, you might find that it's worth sacrificing speed to be able to carry more, and you get the bonus of having an easier time manoeuvring once you reach your destination. The fat ship wobble, while sounding completely made up, is actually a real-life phenomenon that navigators use every day to stay in tune with their vessels.